This West Texas area is one of the richest in the United States, providing food, fiber, and fuel to much of the country. The beginnings of the prosperity that West Texans enjoy today can be traced to the Big Spring, the only significant body of water within a 90-mile radius of what is now the city of Big Spring. Everything west of Weatherford in Texas uh, basically owes its existence, at least of where it's at, to that spring site. You know, it's our heritage. And it's the reason we're here. It's the reason the railroad came here and the settlers stayed here because of the water here. The spring is a relic of the Permian Sea formed before recorded history when mastodons and saber-toothed tigers roamed the area, remains of which have been found near the spring. When Spanish explorers got to the spring in the 1500s, Indians had been using it for years. Captain Randolph Marcy, who realized that America was coming this way, noted the spring in his journal on October 3rd, 1849, and his description is considered to be the first accurate detail of it. Gigantic herds of buffalo drank from the spring and served as the Indians' commissary as a source for food, clothing, and shelter. Buffalo hunters came and the Indians fled. The open range drew cattlemen and farmers. The railroad got water from the spring. In a 25-year period, we went from Indians and buffalo to railroads and highways. Increasing demands of civilization on the underground aquifer caused the spring to cease its flow. For decades, the spring was pretty much left in its primitive state. An old pump house was removed and a balcony overlook was built. There were a few efforts to pump water so it appeared to be a flowing spring, but there was no concerted effort to maintain the area over a long period of time. Now, there is. Big spring, oh, oh, big spring. Sweet water in a thirsty land. It all started with a song by Canadian singer-songwriter Thomas Newman. A few years ago, I started to start a work on an album of songs that I wanted to have themes to do with the environment. I thought the story of this spring was a perfect subject for a song, which I wrote. And I used this as the title track on my album, and it was called Big Spring. Thomas has a friend in Big Spring, Aubrey Weaver. He asked Aubrey to take him to the spring to take a photo for the album cover. Aubrey took him out there and was embarrassed at the way the spring looked. I was struck by the fact that the spring was not attractive and did not make a good first impression. Aubrey took several photos and used them to make a PowerPoint presentation, which he took to Debbie Wegman, director of the Convention and Visitors Bureau in Big Spring. He told her the spring was the city's namesake and needed updating. He suggested the CVB find a first-class landscape architect to make improvements to the spring. Debbie presented the idea to the CVB board and the city council. She got positive responses. Absolutely, everybody was on board uh, with this proposal when we first brought it to them. The CVB board was very interested. Um, and we did have the money um, in our fund balance due to the um, increased hotel tax revenue that we had been getting during the oil boom. So we were very excited to be able to use that money uh, towards something so significant. You know, I think council members just looked at it as another project in town that would be maybe a makeover of what we have here. I don't think anyone realized exactly what was gonna be here. The cost of the project was $1.8 million. Uh, the actual construction was about 11 months. Planning was about four years. The company chosen to do the renovation was KDC Associates of Midland. KDC has done parks and golf courses in several states, and the company has a sterling reputation. Kelly Cook was the architect in charge. When we undertook it, 
we didn't quite realize what we were getting ourselves into and the significance of the site. Um, we quickly became totally enamored with the history as we started putting piece to, to piece to piece together on the site. And it became a, a real passion of the, the whole company. We were able to get some of the best contractors that we knew of that we all knew we, we could work together and could figure out these little problems of logistics. The limestone came from Texas stone quarries south of Big Spring. We were able to order what we needed and we had really good masons to put it all together. And you know, it's still a park, it's still very sturdy, and, uh, but the limestone is very appropriate for that area because it's gonna weather well. When we started trying to come up with these time frames that were important to the region, uh, we had to identify those with something other than just normal signage that could be torn away. So we came up with the idea of creating uh, these these 23,000 pound monoliths uh, standing out there uh, for um, decades and decades to come as being the heart of the of the design. And there's about a uh, oh a concrete footing underneath those boogers that are <laughs> humongous, with lots of steel but uh, they're built to last and uh, they're one piece and we had uh, a pretty good sized crane out there setting all those. I have a, uh, it's called stainless steel um, ironwork over there in Odessa and they had, they went and bought a brand new plasma cutting machine just for this job because they wanted it to be really clean. Those are a half inch plate. They're a half inch plate, very heavy. We had to set those with a smaller crane. The landscaping included native plants and trees. Back when the Comanches were coming through here, there was hardly a bush around, it was mostly grass and there was campsites all over the place. And after we came along, it got all brushy and all sorts of uh, plants from, from elsewhere moved in. Some native grasses were brought in. Veterans helped plant them. We propagated them, cut them back a little bit, got them used to transplanting. And it was about two, three weeks later than, than that we planted them. The water's actually pumped from the lake uphill. And then there's two different waterfalls uphill and then a major waterfall that goes into the actual spring area. Uh, those really make for some very nice soothing sounds and along with all the other amenities we have out here, it's truly an oasis. When that water turned on, I just couldn't believe it. I really couldn't. I go on, man, this is what this is all about. Haley Herrera of the Convention and Visitors Bureau set about finding volunteers to help keep the spring area clean. Well, we have our CHIPS program. It stands for Citizens Helping and Protecting Our Spring. It's volunteers that are community members who want to buy into this project and um, help be our eyes and ears out here at the spring area. Uh, they will pick up trash. they will be just an extra body out here. They'll let us know of any maintenance issues and just help us out that we can't be here all the time. So they'll kind of um, just be our helpers in this area. I look for trash that might need to be picked up just to keep the place neat and clean and uh, just have a great time visiting with people most of the time. At the grand opening of the spring in November of 2017, Comanche Chief Luis Tijerina gave a blessing. Oh, the customer, grandfather. Macpiate, Wilate, Father Sun, Father Sky. We thank you for this day that you have given us and the beauty in which we walk. We ask that you have pity on us that the people might live. Oho, we och be the black power of the West, home of Wakinya and the Thunder Beads. You have the power to give life and the power to take it away. We ask that you have pity on us that the people might live. This is one gem of a place, thanks to, thanks to the mayor, thanks to the city council, thanks to the hundreds of people that were involved. Oh, I think it's a, a marvelous thing. Uh, the spring itself has been left pristine. A lot of effort and work went into breaching the dam and conducting archaeological surveys and performing ethnobotanical studies. I want everybody to enjoy the simplicity of it and the, the zen part of it. It's a great place to go relax. A lot of old souls represented at that site. We wanted to make sure that we did that right. This was probably one of the most rewarding experiences that I've ever had in my working career. But council members, I don't think we had a, a clue that it was going to be anything with the wow effect that we have here today. With my drone, I, I did some drone images 
uh, early in the morning and the way the sun shines across those stones, it just, uh, it's art. It is a beautiful location to create art. We have achieved a great public space. To me, it's an open air cathedral.